What's happening guys? So I have another topic I want to cover. I want to start off by saying do not feel bad if you have kind of fallen for some of these things in the past or if you're doing some of these things right now and it's you find out it's not very effective and it's not the way to go about doing things. Don't feel bad. A lot of people go through this. I've gone through most of them. A lot of the reasons I know that this stuff is not true anymore is because I went out and did the research myself to figure out that they weren't when I was just kind of reading articles and stuff that were based on really bad I don't even know what to call them. Not facts, but just really bad information. So what is today's topic about? Well, as you can probably tell by the title, it's about exercise-induced hormones. Specifically, anabolic hormones. Doing things through your exercise, or even before or after your exercise, try to make sure that your, your hormone levels are high in terms of testosterone, IGF-1, uh, growth hormone, things like that. This is something that you need to stop from doing it right now. I urge you. Do not do this. This was something that I used to do and it just was a complete waste. And it just was something that was a really bad idea. I used to do things like I'd go into training fasted because I wanted to make sure all my levels were high and I would alter my post-workout nutrition and everything because I just wanted to make sure that my elevations were high all the time throughout my workout. This is when I'm working on my muscles, so obviously this is the time that having high anabolic hormones makes more sense, right? I mean, you would think so. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess, depending on how you look at it, that is not how it works. As it turns out, short fluctuations in your anabolic hormones really make no difference. It's really about what it normally is all the time and not so much just short little influxes. It just doesn't make any difference. And this was actually shown through research. Perhaps you've heard these things where people will say, make sure you do your isolation movements in conjunction with bigger movements, your compound movements, your squats and things like that because those movements will increase your anabolic hormones and you'll have a better increase in like your biceps because you did those movements with them. And now it is absolutely 100% true that you will have increases in your anabolic hormones from doing big movements such as squats and deadlifts. This is true, I don't deny this whatsoever. But what this research did is it looked at either doing only arms or doing arms in conjunction with a type of a workout with legs that really increases your anabolic hormones. And when they did this study for, uh, I believe it was 15 weeks, the one group did only isolation movements with their arms. The other group did it in conjunction with, I think it was leg press or something else that had really big increases in, in hormones. And it showed that, yes, the ones that did it with the leg movements had higher increases in anabolic hormones. The people who did only the arm movements had no increase whatsoever in anabolic hormones. But at the end of the study, while both groups increased size and strength, there was no difference whatsoever between the two groups. So even though the one group had the higher increase in anabolic hormones, they saw no better results in size or strength because of those increases. So what does it come down to? Bottom line is, do whatever you feel like you need to do and whatever gives you the best possible workout because really getting a good workout is much more important than any kind of optimization of hormones or anything else. You wanna make sure you hit your numbers, you wanna make sure you're getting your rest and your recovery, but you need to make sure that you're giving it your all at the gym and that you're able to perform your best if you wanna make the most significant muscle gains. So that's what I have for this video. If you found it helpful, please leave it a like. Make sure you're subscribed. I'm gonna go over more topics like this. The next video that I'm gonna do is gonna be about the opposite side of things and I'm talking about catabolic hormones or more specifically cortisol and what that means during training to see if that makes any type of difference or if it's the same like the anabolic hormones. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in that next video.